Here's five tips to get you on the bike faster, get you out the door, cut down the time it takes, have everything be organized, and to make riding more fun. The hardest part for me with riding was uh, getting on and off the bike, or particularly getting on the bike. Um, it would literally take me sometimes 45 minutes to an hour to get on the bike, because I was such a perfectionist. But I was able to cut it down to 15 minutes where I can leave on my own, or go in the car with a buddy, or we're gonna drive to a ride. Um, and it just made my enjoyment of cycling so much better by just creating kind of a system to get me out the door. First thing is what I like to call be messy organized. I'm naturally a little messy, but I found that what works for me is three bins that hold almost everything that I need. Okay. The bottom one is going to be non-essential items, meaning straps for lights, um, different covers, um, maybe your, your chain checker that you're going to use once every month or two. That'll go in the bottom bin. Okay. Middle bin, essential items, um, your pumps, gloves, your glasses, in your cases, everything that you use every single time for a ride, um, go in that middle bit. Top one is a small toolkit that I put together that I can grab that pretty much will do 90% of what I need to fix on a bike if, we're, if we drive somewhere for, for a ride. So I can grab this, put it in the trunk of the car. I can fix everything from a chain to actually have some waterproof fabric patches. If somebody were to go down and the clothes are ripped off or I got a hole, something ripped, somebody goes to put something in a pocket, I can fix that right here. The second part of being messy organized that I didn't figure out until I'd done about 6,000 miles of road riding um, was having two bags that allow me to carry everything out the door or leave for a race um, or just have it be a little bit easier to know where everything is are two drawstring type bags. One uh, holds my helmet. Okay. Was, this came with my cask helmet. Okay. And you could get a couple of these bags at your local sporting goods store. Okay. Nice thing is that these are very ventilated. If you don't have a ventilated bag, like a little drawstring bag, um, just keep the top open, okay? So you let, let your helmet um, breathe a little bit after a long ride. Same thing for my shoes. My shoes go in here after a ride, okay? If I'm gonna leave, the drawstring goes right on my arm. That way I can visually see that I have two essentials for riding, my helmet and my shoes. You're not riding without those. I've gone to a crit practice and forgot the helmet. I had to borrow one from a buddy who actually would bring two. So these two essentials help me. Next thing is a pump, inexpensive pump that you can put in the back of your car. I've seen guys with $150 pumps come out of the back of their car um, this thing's bouncing around in the back of your car. You probably don't want to have some like super blinged out chrome pump, okay? If it stays at home and you got the money and you want a $200 bike pump, great. $30, $40 pump, you know, with a gauge, it's gonna be bouncing around in your car, does the job, okay? Get one from a decent, decent brand, a $30, $40 pump for in the car. Next thing is, I always know roughly what weather I might encounter. Um, obviously where I'm at, it's not going to be a 50 degree temperature change, but knowing, having some essential gear uh, makes life way easier on the bike. 
to get you out the door too. Um, I don't even, I used to check my phone and try to figure out, hey, is, if it drops 10 degrees, am I dressed right? 15 degrees now, if, if I don't, you know, if it's gonna be hotter, hey, I don't need them, but if it's gonna be, you know, somewhat colder, I have my arm warmers. This is obviously for really cold weather riding, but uh, I got my cold weather full finger gloves. I'm always gonna ride with gloves. Um, I think it's a safety issue. If you go down, you're gonna need those gloves big time. But I always have my fingerless gloves or my winter gloves. Highly, highly recommend every cyclist have a balaclava because you can fold, fold that neck portion down. It's really cold out. Fold it down here. Boom. Now you got nice neck warmer. If it's if it's cold enough, you need a balaclava on. This, you know, protect your nose, protect uh, you know, your forehead. Um, and this is a, a windproof one for under 20 bucks. Other second part of the clothing, is, uh, I think every rider should have a, a mesh. Or if you want to have two, you could have a windproof um, undershirt like this. Um, this is great, believe it or not, this is mesh. This will cool you off better in hot weather. I would rather have this on underneath my jersey when it's 100 degrees out than not have it because it allows the air to go underneath my jersey and it, it, it cools me off quicker. So this works. Second thing, somehow, I don't know how, but this is great down to 50 degrees. This allows me to, uh, I can throw this on with some arm warmers and some toe warmers and ride down to 50 degrees. Every cyclist would have a vest on hand. Okay, this is a heavier one, Castelli, um, Perfetto. Um, I like this one in winter time. I don't like to wear a full jacket ever, but this is warm enough where I can fold it up in a back pocket, descend down a 5,000 foot mountain, and this keeps me warm. Some guys use newspaper in the front. I like this just to have, if I'm going out for a casual ride with a buddy, this is great in winter time. So, no, have a, have a little clothing kit that you can throw on quickly or put in your pockets to get you out the door quickly. One other thing that has made cycling way easier for me and has helped if I need to want to lube my chain real quick before I ride or I want to wash the bike quickly or, or anything I need to do on the bike, um, even just putting lights on. Having your bike lean against a wall is great. But when you're in a rush, you want to get out the door, you might, it might fall over, okay? Having a small stand like this has made my life so much easier, okay? You don't have to have a $200 uh, park tool bike stand, okay? Um, this is 20, 25 bucks, okay? It has four legs, four small legs, two plastic U-shape holders that hold your rear chain stays. This is going to hold the rear end off the ground, allow you to turn the cranks, um, essentially as a mini workstation, along with your bike's not gonna fall over, I can put it in the middle of a room, and this stand um, will keep it upright, allows me to work on the bike as well, so you can watch a movie, do maintenance on your bike, and not try to lean it against a wall and hope it doesn't fall. So, mini stand, excellent. Last thing to uh, get you out the door quickly is you're always going to need, uh, I always recommend a small mini pump, um, either for your back pocket. Uh, I don't see a lot of guys in Southern California with pumps on their frames. We're in a really pretentious, stuck up road cycling area. So sometimes I see these stuck on a frame, usually not. This one's carbon fiber. I kind of get into the marketing a little bit on extreme lightweight. But this just goes in a back pocket, okay? So when I'm out riding, I don't even feel it. It weighs 30 grams, okay? Um, less than a gel, um, about the weight of a gel. Um, I'm always going to have this in my saddlebag, but always have these ready to go, some CO2s. Um, they're always in my rear saddlebag here. 
Um, lastly, I don't think enough importance is put on this, that you should, this would be part of kind of your getting ready is having some form of ID. You can go online and get what's called a road ID. Okay. I think it's 10 to $30 for a, a rubber bracelet that has a, a little metal piece that has your information on it. If you get hit by a car, the only two things are going to stay on you if you get hit hard enough, right? Or you go down hard enough. It's going to be a road ID or what I've had created here for way less. That's way more durable is I had a dog tag made at my local army Navy surplus store. It's cost about five bucks. Okay. It has all my information right here on this dog tag. I went a little further and I paired it with a small $5 runners. This is a long distance runners key holder. Okay. This is made to go on your shoelaces uh, when you're running. Okay. But I put my dog tag in there. You can put key, you can put money. This can be your little mini wallet. Okay. But this, as I know, I always have uh, an ID on me. Um, if you get hit by a car, your bike, Gonna be trashed. Your phone is gonna fly out of your back pocket. Anything in your back pockets, consider it gone. If you have no idea where it's gonna fly, every guy should have this. So these are five essential ways that uh, I figure out how to get the door out the door quicker um, that allow me to be a little bit more organized with my cycling. Um, if you had additional things that you like or how, how to organize things, put them in the comments down below. Uh, and please hit subscribe. Um, I'm going to be getting, you know, better cameras, better lighting angles, uh, different areas, outdoor filming areas, things like that. But feel free to hit subscribe if you like uh, my cycling tips and you want to see more.